Hey, hey, hey. The objective of this video is for us to determine why do we use a T instead of a Z. So, turn to page 10 of your notes. Initially, what we are concerned about when we consider T um, versus Z is sigma unknown. Because the bottom line is, if sigma is unknown, we use T. At least that is where our starting point is. If sigma is unknown, and remember sigma is the standard deviation of the population. When it is not given, that means that perhaps we can use T. And the reason I said perhaps is because, let's face it, there are other criteria that we're going to be dealing with. But for now, the reality is, if we don't, if sigma is given, T is not even an option. We shouldn't even consider those other things. So, but when sigma is unknown, yes, we can use, um, possibly use the T distribution. Now, please remember the difference, though, between the idea, other differences between T and Z. T is about a bunch of samples. I have spoken to you guys about this before, but let's say that we are talking about um, your your av the, the average cost of your house, and I take the average cost of my class for period two, then I take the average cost for period three, and then I take the average cost for period four. Now, the one thing you don't know, you don't know the cost of your house, but the one thing I can guarantee you is given that I've got, let's say, approximately 35 students in um, each of those classes, I can still guarantee you that the averages are not going to be the same. And if the averages are not going to be the same, the standard deviations are going to be different. What the T distribution does here, since sigma is not going to be able, uh, since, since sigma is unknown, we know we can easily find the standard deviation of the sample, you know, by just cranking it in the calculator or a computer, whatever you'd like. But since this is unknown right here, that means we cannot use Z, we have to use T. A couple other things we have to pay attention when it comes to the idea. The reason for the degree of freedom is to help us with the variability that will occur given that we have sample differential. Because you know it's going to be there's some going to be some variability in it. Also, remember your chart looks a little different. And as we look at our chart inside the body in here are our critical values. And our critical values for this is remember our T star. We haven't discussed this up here yet. I'll just tell you just briefly. Those are p values or probability values. But you know what? We'll deal with that when we get there. There's one more thing that I want to show you guys when it comes to um, the look of a T versus a um, Z distribution and how the graph actually differs as we look at a different degree of freedom. So as I look at this here, this is out of our textbook. Um, and you can look for it, section, um, the figure 8.13. And as you look at this, I need you to recognize what we have going on here is we have both our normal distribution and we have our um, T distribution. So here, of course, is our normal distribution, the one that you see right there in the purple. That doesn't come out too well. And please notice, as I try to draw it better, our normal distribution, the curve tends to sit there on the horizontal. Yes, I know that's terrible. Okay, with that being said, that again is the normal distribution, which is the idea of Z star, and that's about the entire population. But let's look at the difference now comparing our T to our Z just visually. Here, notice that the T has all of this area still here and here. Those are probabilities, okay, the probability of occurrence. You know when we are looking at our Z distribution, our Z distribution 
here it looks like once we get that far and get that close that it might be 0 0.0005 or something that's so infinitesimal it really does not matter it's essentially zero or it's essentially a hundred percent but when it comes to the z distribution the idea of the z distribution is we have other probabilities that are under there and it changes based on the idea of the degree of freedom so let's check that out as we look at the idea of the degree of freedom for here um, well, looking at the curve when the degree of freedom is 9 look at that value right there okay we have a little bit more um, probabilities that are occurred in there and honestly this will make a lot more sense when we're actually finding p-values but for now I just want to talk about the basic differential between them as I look at this look at that okay how we have a degree of freedom of 2 and the, as the sample size which in this case is 3 n minus 1 to give you the degree of freedom of 2 as the sample size is smaller please notice that the graph seems to hover above the horizontal a lot higher also notice as it hovers higher that it's not as tall well, I think that makes sense because there's only two, I'm sorry, wrong, three samples in there. So, yeah, that makes sense. As I'm looking at going back to the green one with the degree of freedom, it does make sense that this one's going to be a tad taller as I try to write down a 10, okay? And it hovers closer to the base. And this is the thing. As this gets bigger and bigger, as our sample size gets bigger, it's going to get closer to that horizontal. And we're going to find that as the T value increases, so as N increases, it's going to approach the Z. So, that's some basic stuff about the um, T, multiple choice questions waiting to happen. So let's move on to other aspects of the T distribution. So as we go back to the notes, maybe not. Let's remind ourselves of the conditions and assumptions. So we established what the difference between T and a Z is, and now as we look at, we're saying, okay, yes, it's a Z. I'm sorry, yes, it's a T. It's a T. It's a T. And if it is a T, what are the conditions that have to be met? Well, we know um, randomness, 10% rule, normality, if possible. But if it's not approximately normal, remember, a large sample size is okay. Okay, and remember, 30 seems to be the golden mantra for... Um, a large enough sample size. But I want to continue on talking about how we can use, if I have certain data, how I can make a determination. I can't use Z. Can I use T? How do I make the determination? So turn to your page. Well, go to the bottom. Now we've talked about this before. So notice here as you just read number 57. So go ahead and pause. So it says explain why it would not be wise. You can't use this because it's heavily skewed, you've got outliers, and your sample size is too small. But what if, what if I change this? What if I have extreme skewness? I have no outliers and I have a sample size of 30. Well, in this case, even though I have some skewness, remember there was an SRS, established it in here somewhere, a random sample, a sample size of 20, and yes, I have skewness, but because of CLT, 
I can still use the T distribution. But remember here, there are no outliers. So the outliers are the no bueno here. And the sample size is definitely tells us no. But if I have some skewness here, and um, actually that's not even heavy skewness, that's slight skewness, and I have a sample size of greater than um, 30 and no outliers, I can still use the T, even though I have some skewness. Let's move on. Go to page 11 of your notes. Should we use T? Well, as I look at this right here, well, you've already paused and read it. This is all presidents. All presidents is a census. So remember, T's are based on sample information. We have the entire um, population. It's not a sample, so that's why we can't use T. Let's move on to B. Here the question is, well, why can't we or can we? And no, because it's not randomness is not mentioned. Um, and it's not necessarily reasonable to assume that there that um, it was random. So, and please also remember that this stats group, our stats group, would not represent the entire population. Where does it say how much time do students spend on the internet? Now, if they said how much time does stats students, um, okay, yeah, I guess that would be reasonable. Um, but 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 I'd have to say that it's reasonable to that randomness occurred. But the bottom line here is I didn't see it. Okay, and here, stats um, students, AP stats students, cannot represent the entire population of all students. And as we look at part C, and I know you're, this um, is terrible. Remember, you can find problem 60 in your textbook. But we have a sample of 100, so that's a check. The 10% rule is met check. And yes, we do have a little skewness, but the reality is we have a, um, it was a random sample of 100, so therefore it is reasonable to use the T. Okay, got caught by the bell. Okay, so to answer the question, why T? not Z. We've met our objective. You have a good one. Now TTFN. Ta-ta for now.